Hi, this is Cindy Sims. I am the District 5150 District Grants Coordinator and a proud member of the Rotary Club of Foster City. We will be learning about what district grants are, how to apply for a district grant, and what to do after your club receives a district grant. Let's begin. First, where can you find information about district grants on the District 5150 website? Well, you go to our website, you click on About Rotary, scroll down to the Rotary Foundation, scroll down to Rotary Grants, over to District Grants, and finally to District Grants Overview. When you get there, you'll find steps one through five. So first step one, step one is a welcome and an overview on where district grant funding comes from. District designated funds, DDF, provide funding for district grants and global grants. Each club is allocated DDF annually by District 5150 based on the club's prior three years of donations to the Rotary Foundation's annual fund. Estimated DDF allocations for the coming Rotary year are sent to club presidents and president-elects by the end of April each year. So what's the difference between district grants and global grants? Well, global grants support large international projects with long-term sustainable outcomes in one or more of Rotary's areas of focus. While it's possible for the project to be completed within a single Rotary year, typically a global grant spans several years, depending on the size and scope. Global grants range from 30,000 to 200,000. Your club as lead club is responsible for securing the funding to access the global grant pro program. The Rotary Foundation will match an approved global grant project $1 for $1 of DDF allocated to the project. The minimum budget for a global grant is 30,000 and global grants are administered by the Rotary Foundation. District grants, on the other hand, fund smaller scale short-term projects that address immediate needs in your community or internationally. These grants are usually completed within a Rotary year and are easier to obtain than global grants with fewer restrictions and requirements. District grants are administered by the District 5150 District Grants Committee. So what can a district grant be used for? Well, a district grant can be used to fund local community or international humanitarian projects in the areas of youth, elderly, literacy, or community or Rotary International's seven areas of focus, peace and conflict resolution, disease prevention and treatment, water and sanitation, maternal and child health, basic education and literacy, economic and community development, and new supporting the environment. What are some examples of district grant projects in District 5150? Well, there have been community projects like teacher mini grants, RILA scholarships, community food banks, Rotary Park Improvement, Rotacare, Solar Car Project, Thanksgiving dinners for low-income families, Bay Cruise and movie for low-income children with disabilities, dictionary distribution for third graders, COVID-19 masks distribution, community needs-based scholarships, furnishings for Center for the Domestic Peace, the SPARK program, hams for single moms, as well as there have been district grants for international projects, H2 Open Doors water purification projects, sanitary products for girls in Uganda, the Yurok Nation playground installation, which you'll hear about shortly. And this is just some of the many district grant projects in District 5150. Can you use your club's DDF for more than one district grant project? Yes you just need to complete a district grant application for each project. What can a district grant not 
be used for? Well, district grants cannot be used for unrestricted cash donations to a beneficiary or cooperating organization. It cannot be used for operating administrative or indirect program expenses of another organization. District grants cannot be used as matching funds for any other project, cannot be used for reimbursement for previously completed projects. You cannot use district grants to purchase land or buildings or construct or rehabilitate buildings except for water and sanitation products, projects. And district grants cannot be used for fundraising activities and expenses related to rotary events such as conferences, institutes, anniversary celebrations or entertainment activities. Okay, you have completed step one, which is the overview about district grants. And now you are ready for step two, getting your club qualified before April 1st, 2021. First, the club president elect and president elect nominee must complete the Rotary International Learning Center grants management course and Rotary Foundation Basics course by February 28th, 2021. The club's Rotary Foundation chair must complete the Rotary International Learning Center grants management course by February 28th, 2021. The club president elect, president elect nominee and Rotary Foundation chair must complete the District 5150 grants management course of which this module is part by February 28th, 2021. If your club does not have a president elect nominee, one of the following club officers must complete the required trainings by February 28th, 2021. Either the international service chair, community service chair or Rotary Foundation chair. The signatures of the president elect and president-elect nominee are required on the Rotary Foundation Memorandum of Understanding and District 5150's Memorandum of Understanding Addendum by April 1st, 2021. Again, if your club does not have a president-elect nominee by April 1st, one of these chairs, International Service, Community Service, Rotary Foundation Chair, who completes the Grants Management and Rotary Foundation Basics courses may sign in lieu of the president-elect nominee. The club president-elect must enter goals into the Rotary Club Central for the Rotary Foundation's annual fund no later than April 1st, 2021. And the club must be in good standing with Rotary International and District 5150 membership reporting financial obligations and dues, as well as state and federal tax filing requirements by April 1st, 2021. So qualification requirements must be completed for the 21-22 Rotary year and the 2021-2022 club qualification requirements checklist must be submitted to your club's assistant governor by April 1st, 2021. All right, you've finished step two, your club is qualified. Now, step three, work with your club or board of directors to determine DDF grant projects for your club in 2021, 2022. A district grant application for 2021, 2022 DDF must be submitted prior to June 1st, 2021 which means you need to be working with your club prior to June 1st, 2021 to determine your grant projects. Now, where do you find that application for a district grant application? Well, you go back to the district website, click on about Rotary, down to the Rotary Foundation, down to Rotary Grants, over to district grants and on to district grants overview and you're going to look at step three and you'll find in blue district 5150 grant application so you click on that and you follow the directions to complete the application be sure to allow enough time to complete the application 
and secure the signatures of the 2020-2021 president-elect, who's your club's next year's president, and the 2020-2021 president-elect nominee, who's next year's president-elect, before June 1st. June 1st is that magic date. Completed online applications are automatically emailed to me and the applications must be received by June 1st, 2021. Before you begin filling out that application form, review the application form, take a look at it. Be sure that you have the information required to complete the application. What's the name of the project? How much will it cost? How many Rotarians will be involved? Who else is a part of or a partner to the application? You wanna have all that information before you begin completing the application. If your club applied for DDF funds last year, use a copy of last year's district grant application as a guide. And once again, confirm with your 2021-2022 club president and president-elect that you've got their approval for the project. Now let's take a look at an example of a district grant application that's completed using the Yurok Nation Playground project as the example. And that's a project that Foster City, the Rotary Club of Foster City has done for uh, about four years now. So when completing the application, you put in the lead club name, Foster City. If other clubs were working with us on this project, we would list their names as well. But there are, Foster City is the only club that works on this project, only Rotary Club. club. And again, the project name is Yurok Nation Playground Project. Briefly describe the project and what the project will do. Well, we will remove an existing playground donated by the city of Foster City and install it at a playground site in Klamath, California, designated by the Yurok Nation Tribal Council. Interact students from San Mateo High School and members of the Rotary Club of Foster City will install the playground during spring break 2021. For the first time, children from the Yurok Nation who live close to this playground site will have a playground to enjoy. What is the start date? Well, we do this over spring break. So the first date of spring break this coming year is April 3rd, 2021 and spring break ends April 11th, 2021. And then a reminder that district grants do require Require active involvement of Rotarians. And so you need to list the number of Rotarians that will participate in this project. In our case, it's about 15. Then you want to describe active participation by the Rotarians that's non-financial and you must provide at least two examples of active participation. So in our case, Rotarians will remove the donated playground. They will work with Yurok Nation Tribal Council members to designate a playground site in or near Klamath. Rotarians will transport Interact students to Klamath and Rotarians will work with the Interact students to install the playground. What is the number of non-Rotarians that will benefit from this project? About 40. And who is the relevant community and how will the project improve their lives? Well, we see two different relevant communities. First is the Yurok Nation children and their parents who will benefit from access to the playground. The children will enjoy access to and fun through daily exercise on the playground equipment, and their parents will enjoy playing with their children at the playground. The other relevant community in our case is San Mateo High School Interact students who will have a unique hands-on experience learning to use tools and equipment to install a playground. What are the expected long-term community impacts? Well, young and old Yurok Nation members will live healthier lives with easy access to a playground and San Mateo High School Interact students will learn ways to help others and create memories that will influence them throughout their lives. Some clubs choose to use district grant DDF funds to purchase dictionaries for their third grade dictionary project. If that's what your club chooses to do, then you would answer yes to this next question. Is this a dictionary project? In our case, no, it's not. But if it was, then we would put down how many dictionaries will be distributed. 
Some clubs choose to use their district grant DDF funds for RILA scholarships. If that would be your club for your district grant application, then you would answer, yes, this is a RILA project, but in our case, it's, it's not, it's a playground project. But if it was a RILA scholarship project, then we would put down how many students would be sponsored. Will the project address any of Rotary International's seven areas of focus? And if yes, which area? Well, we believe we are helping to fight disease because Yurok Nation children will have healthy exercise options that can establish lifelong exercise habits. Describe how the general public will know that this is a Rotary sponsored project and provide examples. Well, articles about the playground work, work will be featured in the local newspapers in both Klamath and Foster City and a wooden sign will be posted near the playground thanking the Rotary Club of Foster City and San Mateo High School Interact Club. Is a cooperating organization involved in this project? Yes. The City of Foster City will donate a playground and the Yurok Nation Tribal Council will designate a playground site. All right, how will we pay for this project? What, is the, what are the income sources? Well, we are requesting $3,000 in district grant funds, DDF. And we are requesting up to 3,000. We actually have more than 3,000 available in the Foster City Club, but we're only requesting up to 3,000 for this project. Our club is providing an additional $1,000 in funds and San Mateo High School Interact Club fundraisers raise 1,000. So that's a total of $5,000 income. Now, what are the expected expenditures? Provide specific costs. Well, we estimate about $2,000 to pay for hotel rooms for the 20 Interact students. Rotarians pay for their own rooms. $500 to rent a trailer to haul the playground equipment. $500 to rent a ditch digger. $1,500 for paint, screws, replacement parts, $500 for food for lunches. So those are specifics as best we know them at the beginning of the project. Total project expenditures, $5,000. $5,000 income, $5,000 expenditures. Those two numbers have to match. If your club does not receive the entire amount of DDF requested, can your club fund the shortfall from its own funds? And our club says, yes, we can. If we don't get all the $3,000, we have other funds available that we could use uh, to supplement that. But if we had to answer no, if no, can the project be downsized to meet the amount of district grant and club contributions to the project? So let's say we just don't have the extra money um, then can we downsize the project? In this case, we could answer yes, because we might take fewer Interact students, we might put in a smaller playground, um, but uh, in this case, we don't have to fill that out because our club can meet the shortfall if necessary. Okay, so who's the club primary contact for this project? Well, it's Greg Cool. He's our Yurok Playground Project Leader and I've not put his real email address or real phone number in, but you would. And then our secondary contact is Curtis Chen, who is our club president. And again, I didn't put his secondary, I didn't put his email or phone number in, but you would if you were completing this. And these are the contacts uh, for further information if we need it. Finally, required authorization. The president of your Rotary Club for 21-22 needs to affirm that the club or board has voted to undertake this project as an activity of the club. And so Curtis is our 2021-2022 president. And in this case, I've signed for him. And you may be filling out this application and you're not the president and you need to sign for the president. You can, but your president needs to send me an email authorizing you to sign on his or her behalf, on their behalf. And the same for your 2021-2022 president-elect. And in our case, Shiraz Zak is our president-elect for 
And I've also signed for her, so she would also have to send an email to me authorizing me to sign on her behalf. And if your club does not have a president elect for 2122, then it can be either your foundation chair, your international service chair, or your community service chair that can sign. Now, a new feature this year on the application, if you're working away in the application and you don't get it all finished, you can save it. You click on save at the bottom of the page and what will happen is you will receive an email that says you can edit and submit your final application within 15 days. And you will get this uh, private access URL, which you just click on, and then you enter the passcode, and then your application in the saved mode comes back up and you can continue working on it. Once you've finished it and you, are, you think you've got all the information, then you're ready to continue. You click on continue. And when you click continue, a completed district grant application pops up for your final review. There will be an option for modify if changes still need to be made and an option for confirm if no changes are required. And it looks like this. So you can either click on modify if you still need to make a few more changes or you click on confirm if everything looks good and you're ready to go. But before you hit confirm, make a copy for your files. Print out a copy of your final district grant application. Because when you click confirm, you will receive this, an email that says your form was successfully submitted and you have a reference number. I, on the other hand, do receive the completed application. So if you forgot to make a copy, you can just call me or email me and I'll email you a copy of your completed application. But it's always a good idea to print a copy before you hit confirm. All right. Now, you've successfully submitted your application, and once your application is approved, then you can implement your project. But do not begin implementation of your project until you have received written notification from me that the application has been approved, both by District 5150 and the Rotary Foundation. This usually takes a little while, and so notification usually occurs by mid-September. But again, do not begin implementation till you've received written notification or you will not be able to use your DDF funds for your project. A reminder that your club must maintain a separate bank account for each district grant over 2000. Since our Yurok Nation Playground project, we request 3000 DDF, we do maintain a separate bank account for that district grant. Now, hooray! You are ready to enjoy the club's project. Go to work and savor the good work your members will do to make a positive difference in the lives of so many who will benefit from your project. When the project's done, you have one more step, step five, which is to submit a final or interim report on how your project went and how you use the funds. And that's due by May 1st, 2022. So once your project's finished, complete that report online by clicking on the blue district grant final report under step five on the District 5150 website. And one more time, where do you find that? Our website, go to About Rotary, scroll down to the Rotary Foundation, down to Rotary Grants, over to District Grants, and then District Grants Overview. And you'll go to step five, and you'll find that blue district grants final report. Before you begin filling out that final report, review the report form, take a look at it. Uh, use your club's district grant application as reference when you're completing the final or interim report and be sure that you have the information required to complete the final report. Do you have receipts? Do you have the actual cost? How many Rotarians participated? How many other people participated? Be sure you've got that information. And then you want to finally confirm with your 2122 club president that you've got their approval because they will need to sign the final or interim report. 
it's a good idea to complete the final report as soon as the project is finished. The final report can be submitted anytime prior to May 1st, 2022. Now, if your project covers more than one rotary year, which is July 1st to June 30th, then you must file an interim report for the first year of the project. And you still must file that by May 1st, 2022. It's the same form, you just fill it out as an interim report. All district grant projects must be completed by April 30th of the second rotary year of the project. So let's say for some reason, and let's say it was COVID, we couldn't do our, rotor, our Rear Rock Nation playground project due to COVID. So that would have been carried over to, the, to another year for the second year. So the first year I would have filled out an interim report and the second year we would have had to have completed the project by April 30th. And then that final report must be completed uh, by May 1st, 2023. All right, you've completed steps one, two, three, four, and five of this training. So congratulations, you have completed the District 5150 District Grants Training Module. Once your club completes steps one through five, you can submit a district grant application to use your club's DDF for a district grant project that meets the needs of your local community or an international community. And if you run into any questions, don't hesitate to email me or call me with your questions and I will be glad to be of help. So another door has opened for another opportunity to do good work in the world. Go for it. <laughs>